Forrest Gump is a myth of 20th century America. Robert Zemeckis' film comprehensively tracks the story of America from the post-World War II period into the post-Watergate era. And like any good myth, it filters historical facts through allegorical characters and a particular language. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. To create a symbolic journey that makes emotional sense out of what was a deeply complicated and confusing era for many Americans. Somebody shot that nice young president when he was riding in his car. And a few years after that, somebody shot his little brother, too. In this myth, Forrest himself embodies our country's central spirit. He must be the stupidest son of a bitch alive! So as Forrest Gump turns 25 this year, here's our take on what this modern American myth has to say about our national identity. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified about all of our new videos. Forrest's life story is interwoven with major historical events from the 1950s to the 1980s. Zemeckis even inserts Forrest into real archival footage, in a technique considered pretty cutting edge when the movie was made in 1994. Thus, the film rewrites history so that the character is there, the secret catalyst of all the events that define our collective memory. The lights are off and they must be looking for a fuse box or something because in flashlights, they're keeping me awake. Big personal events in his life map onto pivotal historical moments or have recognizable history as a backdrop. It was the happiest moment of my life. The film also uses the most iconic music associated with the periods it covers. There's something happening here. Making this feel at times close to an audiovisual textbook. You ain't nothing but a the result of this historical rewrite is that Forrest's story is America's story. It begins with a shameful past. Forrest is named after Nathan Bedford Forrest, the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. So the story starts in the shadow of America's original sin. His childhood in the 50s is pretty peaceful and happy, just like the decade was a prosperous one for many Americans. Forrest's confusion as he runs straight off the college football field College was very confusing times. reflects the 60s tumultuous conflicts over civil rights. Federal troops enforcing a court order integrated the University of Alabama today. In Vietnam, he watches his friends get killed and wounded in a war that doesn't make sense. Now, I don't know much about anything, but I think some of America's best young men served in this war. Personally feeling the defining American tragedy of this era. What this happen? The cultural divide between establishment types and counterculture hippies again affects Forrest very personally, as he and his love Jenny are separated by their very different paths. We have very different lives, you know. Forrest helps open up U.S. relations with communist China. Somebody said world peace was in our hands, but all I did was play ping pong. Post-military life, he becomes an exemplary entrepreneur, transforming a dinky boat into a successful shrimping business literally overnight. We got more money than David Crockett. So he lives that American ideal of getting obscenely rich through simple perseverance. Then he's an early investor in the tech boom. He got me invested in some kind of fruit company. In 1976, Forrest sets off on a three-year cross-country run after Jenny leaves him, and his personal heartbreak is linked to a national need to heal and process the tumult of the 60s. For some reason, what I was doing seemed to make sense to people. Jenny's death in the early 80s is part of the dawning AIDS crisis. I have some kind of virus, and the, the doctors don't they don't know what it is, and there isn't anything they can do about it. And it symbolizes a mourning for something beautiful and pure of our national character that was lost in these times. But while he'll never be over his grief for Jenny, his touching life as a father and the vast potential of his son, Forrest Jr. Is, is he smart? Aren't he? He's very smart. He's one of the smartest in his class leave us with optimism that the kids and the future of America will be all right. You'd be so proud of him.
So what exactly is the movie trying to say by choosing this unassuming, largely passive simpleton to carry the mantle of our country's history? At first glance, Forrest lacks stereotypical American traits, like ambition, ego, self-interest, or career goals. The very first thing we're told about him is that he's slow-witted. Now this is normal. Forrest is right here. Even his last name, Gump, is a word for fool. Yet, he achieves all the trappings of the classic American dream, serving his country, becoming a successful capitalist, meeting presidents, and starting a family with the woman he's always loved. And while it may seem he rises purely thanks to dumb luck, in fact, he possesses key qualities that account for his success and reflect something about our national character. I said, here's a guy that's got his act together. Here's somebody who's got it all figured out. Here's somebody who has the answer. One of his greatest gifts is his single-minded focus and straightforward dedication to the task at hand. When someone gives Forrest a simple direction, like to run across a field, keep his eye on a ping pong ball, or reassemble a gun, he excels at this. Why did you put that weapon together so quickly, Go? You tell me to, drill sergeant. Jesus H. Christ! This is a new company record. It's like there's no extra clutter in his brain distracting him and getting in the way of his focus. And because he's so unintellectual, he never gets bored with tasks others would find repetitive. I played ping pong even when I didn't have anyone to play ping pong with. And this aspect of Forrest's nature may be getting at how the U.S. does well when it channels its energy into achieving very clear objectives. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Another of Forrest's defining skills is his ability as a runner, which symbolizes stamina and resilience. And when I got there, I figured since I've gone this far, I might as well turn around, just keep on going. His love of running captures an American enthusiasm and all-or-nothing attitude. From that day on, if I was going somewhere, I was running. If you're going to do something, why walk when you could run? And it also represents the fortitude to keep going no matter how tough it gets. My mom always said, you got to put the past behind you before you can move on. And I think that's what my running was all about. In the scene where a group of local teenage boys chase Forrest, their car features a prominent Confederate flag license plate, as if Forrest is trying to outrun the evils and pain of our country. Yet Forrest always does outrun whatever danger is after him, even as the forces chasing him get more and more formidable. Even though Forrest's life is marked by disadvantages, he has a low IQ, a crooked spine, and an absent father, he miraculously overcomes his disability. Now you wouldn't believe it if I told you that I could run like the wind blows. So his superpower reveals the optimism at the heart of this movie. The implied message is that our country's 20th century journey is about triumphing over darkness, even when it seems impossible. Run, Forrest, run! Jenny first tells Forrest to run away from problems, but Forrest's impulse to run is ultimately a zeal for running itself, embodying the wisdom that the journey is really the destination. Now it used to be, I ran to get where I was going. I never thought it would take me anywhere. When Bubba later repeats Jenny's instructions during battle, Forrest, characteristically, does what he's told. But he quickly sees a problem with running away. I ran so far and so fast that pretty soon I was all by myself, which was a bad thing. Bubba. So he runs back into the line of fire. Bubba was my best good friend. I had to make sure he was okay. What's beautiful about the scene of him rescuing his wounded brothers is the simplicity of his motivation. And every time I went back looking for Bubba, somebody else was saying, help me, Forrest, help me. In contrast to the grandiosity of Lieutenant Dan's dream of dying heroically, I was supposed to die in the field with honor. His instinctual understanding that we don't leave our friends behind is what heroism really is. This scene also shows that when the core things he knows are important are on the line, Forrest isn't just mindlessly obedient. Don't you stay here, goddammit! That's an order! I gotta fight, Bubba! 
So Forrest is actually a lot smarter than people think in a critical way. It's just that he really only concerns himself with the few things that truly matter. Bubba was my best good friend. And even I know that ain't something you can find just around the corner. Forrest also has a total lack of ego and a down-to-earth love of his home. Qualities many successful Americans pay lip service to, but rarely practice. And because I was a gozillionaire and I liked doing it so much, I cut that grass for free. And while Forrest is not a creative ideas guy himself, he's responsible for Elvis's moves. Say man, show me that crazy little walk you just did there. The lyrics to Imagine. And in China, they never go to church. No religion too? Hard to imagine. Well, it's easy if you try, Dick. And the shit happens slogan. It happens. What, shit? All these revelations come out of his ability to be himself in a totally unfiltered, unselfconscious way. And this realness sparks breakthroughs in others. I found out that that man did come up with an idea for a t-shirt. He made a lot of money off of it. Most fundamentally, he embodies true egalitarianism. You're the same as everybody else. The virtue of being receptive. What's your sole purpose in this army? To do whatever you tell me, drill sergeant? God damn it, Gump! You're a goddamn genius! And an inexhaustible ability to love. I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. If Forrest is the central spirit of America, the supporting characters represent other key mythical or spiritual aspects of our national identity. Forrest's first inspiration is his mother, who represents fierce love of family. My boy Forrest is gonna get the same opportunities as everyone else. And the power of a homegrown folk wisdom. Life is a box of chocolates, Forrest. You never know what you're gonna get. Mrs. Gump's words are essentially a Bible to her son, which translates the complicated world into accessible language and evocative metaphors. I've always had a way of explaining things so I could understand them. Almost all his beliefs come from her. Well, I'm always said that there's an awful lot you can tell about a person by their shoes. Now, Mama said there's only so much fortune a man really needs, and the rest is just for showing off. Mama. Always said dying was a part of life. When he needs guidance, he looks for ways to interpret his mother's teachings as needed, just as one might interpret a Bible verse. Mama said not to be taken rides from strangers. This is a busted school. I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. I'm Dorothy Harris. Well, now we ain't strangers anymore. Mama Gump instills in Forrest the liberating knowledge that, despite differences in our gifts and our fortunes, on the deepest human level, everyone is really equal. Don't ever let anybody tell you they're better than you, Forrest. More often in our American culture, we emphasize telling kids they're special, one of a kind. But the characters in this story who feel they're special, smart, important, or entitled to a special life suffer due to that thinking. I was... Lieutenant Dan Taylor. You still Lieutenant Dan. Forrest's stable, well-adjusted temperament comes out of the philosophical tools his mama gave him for processing this world, especially what's dark and troubling about it. Mama, what's vacation mean? Vacation? Where daddy went. Vacations when you go somewhere and you don't ever come back. She doesn't lie to Forrest that he's smarter than he is. Instead, she drills into him the point that he has control over whether he does stupid things or not. And that's what really counts. Are you stupid or something? Mama says stupid is as stupid does. So instead of denying her son's disadvantages or shielding him from the upsetting aspects of life or history. Mama said that the Forrest part was to remind me that sometimes we all do things that well, just don't make no sense. She equips him with a matter-of-fact worldview that doesn't allow adversity or hardships to make him feel disempowered. I guess you could say me and Mama was on our own. 
but we didn't mind. Later, we see pretty much every other character unable to deal with the kind of adversity that Forrest overcomes. Do you know what it's like not to be able to use your legs? Yes, sir, I do. And his resilience is largely thanks to his mother's education, which taught him to look truths in the face, while not letting anyone talk you out of the most important things you know deep down. He didn't want to be called crippled, just like I didn't want to be called stupid. Forrest's childhood sweetheart Jenny represents historical trauma. Her father's abuse leads her to repeat a pattern of self-harming choices and toxic relationships with men. For a long time, she rejects Forrest's love. I would never hurt you, Jenny. I know you wouldn't, Forrest. Seemingly because she thinks she should be with a man who will hurt her. I would never hurt you. You know that. Forrest and Jenny are inversions of each other. Forrest is slow, while Jenny is very smart and perceptive. Forrest grows up contented in the warmth of his mother's unconditional love, while the first thing Jenny knows of this world is her father's abuse. Forrest runs everywhere toward the world. Jenny shares that open, go where life leads you attitude. Everybody wanna go to San Francisco? I'll go. But for her, it's really running away. Where are you running off to? Not running. Her recurring desire is to become a bird. Dear God, make me a bird so I can fly far, far, far away from here. But she can never escape the pain she's trying to be free from. You think I could fly off this bridge? Because it's deep inside her, eating her from within. Sometimes I guess there just aren't enough rocks. In the novel that Forrest Gump is based on, Forrest wasn't as squeaky clean. But Richard Corliss writes that in the film adaptation, screenwriter Eric Roth transferred all of Forrest's flaws and most of the excesses Americans committed in the 60s and 70s to her. So we can see how the film explicitly turns Jenny into a symbol of America's inability to heal from past wounds. I just, I want to apologize for anything that I ever did to you because I was messed up for a long time. She represents the 60s counterculture that strove to break with past injustice and create a future based on love and equality. She discovered ways to expand her mind and learn how to live in harmony. But Jenny is too wounded to really do this. So her dreams of peace give way to attempts to escape reality, just as the free love movement eventually deteriorated in a similar way. Despite her tragic fate, Jenny represents an incredible beauty in the American spirit and history. The idealism of the 60s was a remarkable dream. Likewise, in Forrest's eyes, nothing and no one compares to Jenny. She was like an angel. I'd never named a boat before, but there was only one I could think of. The most beautiful name in the wide world. Forrest's life is always tinged with sadness because however much he prospers, the one he loves isn't with him for most of it. I wish I could have been there with you. This incredible person with so much potential can never live the life she should because she was terrorized by the man who brought her into this world. And that's a terrible injustice. So though Forrest himself embodies the optimism and resilience of our national character, his love for Jenny captures that the losses and suffering of the less fortunate among us will always color even our country's greatest joys and achievements. As happy as Forrest is being a dad to Forrest Jr., he'll never stop missing Jenny. I miss you, Jenny. Bubba represents the American entrepreneurial spirit. His dream is to start his own business and rise on the capitalist ladder. I'm going into the shrimp and business for myself after I get out the army. It's significant that the one main character of color in the film has the most capitalist drive. For this young black man, the capitalist American dream represents the chance to make a better life than his ancestors had. His mama cooked shrimp. And her mama before her cooked shrimp. And her mama before her mama cooked shrimp too. And after Bubba dies and Forrest makes his dream a reality, we see the power of money in freeing Bubba's mother from that oppressive history. She didn't have to work in nobody's kitchen no more. Yet Bubba himself never gets to make this happen, so he also becomes a symbol of the great human potential that our country has lost to senseless wars. 
Bob was going to be a shrimp and boat captain, but instead he died right there by that river in Vietnam. Lieutenant Dan represents the American military tradition. Somebody in his family had fought and died in every single American war. His wish to continue in his ancestors' footsteps captures the military's illustrious past and how it's a way of life for generations of American families. But his crisis in Vietnam interrupts that tradition and shatters his worldview. I should have died out there with my men. This gets at how Vietnam made people question previous assumptions that America was the good guy. Instead of finding glory, Lieutenant Dan is permanently scarred and returns to a world that doesn't respect his sacrifice. <laughs> you freak, you loser, you freak. Yet in the end, this man comes to be grateful that he survived. I never thanked you for saving my life. And the suggestion is that by making it through this test, he comes out the other side with a richer understanding of what life's about. He never actually said so, but I think he made his peace with God. Finally, Jenny's and Forrest's son, Little Forrest, signals the promise of the next generation. He embodies the best of both his parents, his mother's intelligence. Every night we read a book, and she's so smart, Jenny. And his father's open-hearted capacity for love. I love you too, Daddy. The movie tells us that this young boy does not represent a departure from history. He has his father's first name and will grow up in the exact same house. And you were Dorothy Hurst, and I'm Forrest Gump. So Little Forest represents the power of building and improving upon our country's past to live up to our full potential. I'm going to serve that for so and tell because Bram used to read it to you. This film and its values are as American as apple pie. Why are you so good to me? You're my girl. It celebrates capitalism and lets us buy into the dream of becoming rich. It emphasizes the importance of being a good person who loves your hometown and your mother. And it hints at a divine presence watching over us. Right then, God showed up. The filmmakers intended the story to be apolitical. But Forrest Gump isn't about politics or conservative values. It's about humanity. Even when Forrest speaks his thoughts on the Vietnam War, the mic gets unplugged so we don't get to hear them. That's all I have to say about that. That's the right on, man. Within the story, his fellow citizens can't understand how he can have no political ideology. Everywhere he goes, they try to project motivations onto him. Are you doing this for world peace? Are you doing this for the homeless? Are you running for women's rights? Or for the environment? Or for animals? They or just couldn't believe home. that somebody would do all that running for no particular reason. Forrest grounds his story in events that dominate our collective national memory, and which are inextricably bound up with personal memories. I remember when that happened, when Wallace got shot. So the goal of this exercise is to bring us together with shared stories and to illustrate the link between personal and communal well-being. Well, I'm always said that there's an awful lot you can tell about a person by their shoes, where they go, where they've been. His gift for storytelling echoes the U.S.'s ability to craft a narrative about itself that people want to buy into. Well, I thought it was a very lovely story. And you tell it so well, with such enthusiasm. If there's one image that this modern American myth has made eternal, it's young Forrest breaking free of his restraints and doing what nobody thought he could do. I ran and ran. Never letting the bullies and the darkness of the world overtake him. And this, too, is Forrest Gump's fundamental belief about the American spirit. We can do the impossible. And so... You just ran. Yeah. Hi guys, it's Susanna. And Deborah, And we are The, the Take. Take. If you like what we're doing and you're new here, please subscribe.